Mic check, one, two. Mic check, one, two.
Haumidaku Yapi, Dayamachi Yakapi, Dayaya Hipido, Elijah Hopkins, Amaki Yapi. I want to welcome each and every one of you to the Fort Peck Community College Student Orientation Day. Uh, we have a full agenda for you today. Uh, we are live streaming on Facebook. Uh, I want to thank all of you that are joining us on the Zoom webinar. Uh, this uh, orientation will be about two to three hours. We have all kinds of good stuff lined up for you today to help make you successful. Um, and so with that, we'll, we'll get started here. Um, I want to first introduce uh, the president of the college, Ms. Haven Gorno. Um, I asked her if she would uh, offer a prayer for us. And I, I have some sage and sweet grass here. So maybe I'll, I'll get the sage going. And then after we smudge everybody, we can say a, a short prayer. So, um, welcome today. Um, I'm so happy to see you all here. And we're going to say a, um, a prayer right now. And I, I, you know, I'd like to ask um, Tommy Christian um, if he would do us the honor. Tommy is our um, camp. He's, he's actually your campus liaison. He's our, he's our um, cultural advisor. Um, he's here for you. Um, Whenever you need him, if you, you know, he'll, he'll kind of explain that sometime today, I'm sure. So um, welcome and thank you, Tommy. My relatives, good morning. I welcome you here to our meeting. And again, uh, the student orientation is always a good thing for the staff so we get to know who everybody is. I'd like 
extra step, and you have an idea, Tom, of what our expectations of you are as a mountain. But as uh, the president stated, I'm the culture liaison, and I've got a pretty flexible schedule. And uh, during the day, if you need anything, I have an office over at the student services that's downstairs, and I, I can come in there at any time uh, to get some guidance or direction or anything like that. But uh, my nephew here, Elijah, he's the former vice president, so he's the head of student services. Uh, he also has a staff that can take care of any needs that you have. I'm, I'm very honored to be here this morning. I have a, a lot of uh, hope that this year will be a great one. Again, I think we have like 450 students that are currently registered and something like that. But uh, last year, I think we had 700 plus, so almost university level uh, students. So, uh, But what you're choosing to do in life is something that's going to benefit not only yourself, but your family, your tribe, your communities in which you come from. And uh, they all seem to understand the basis and the foundation that uh, we have evolved from, and that's through our spirituality. And so we always try to uh, respect that, that value system that uh, uh, precipitates from natural law to really afford ourselves an opportunity to understand who and what we are, and the most important one is why we are pursuing your purpose and dedication in life. So I'm here this morning to welcome you all, and hopefully you can help me as we go through whatever your higher power consists of, and that way help me as we go to the Creator on behalf of all of you, the staff here, uh, our, our, our communities, uh, across the reservation, of course, what it is that you're trying to do is uh, ask for understanding, guidance, and direction in a situation. Something that we cannot see, cannot feel, but that we know is present, and that's your higher power or the creator or whatever you refer to it as. So as we go to the creator, I'm going to ask you to help me in, in a good way and pray on your own, okay? Okay. Atukashila na wakanta kata teoya dobo unchi makana makaina. Na kumi dake pe wanagi makpea kaya ge. Ocho kaakta hiyo. Nicho ke. Unchi ake ni dake pe na waya pe waya teki. Oki awo ushi wichala ho. Atukashila na wakanta kata. Tixi apo mi dake pe unchi makao mani waya zapo. Atukashila na wakanta kata. Dixiapomidakia <laughs> Oyate oyasi chanku gruto aga omani owe chaki apo ushi wichala. Atu kashila na makantaka. Omaki anaha waka yapi o loma ahia waimte. O matelo ushi nalo omaki awo. Wana wa cheki apo. Wana wa cheki apo. Wana ya ya wa cheki ya po hai ya hi ya wa na ya wa cheki ya po hai ya hi ya wa ta ya ya ke le na o ta wo ka ki ja pi Iksu ya po yo, Iksu ya po yo, Wa che ki ya po, Hai ya hi ya, Wa na ya ya, Wa che ki ya po, Hai ya hi ya, E ha hi, E ha hi, Ha ha ki. Before I leave, I just want to explain the song to you. What it says is, everybody pray now, everybody pray now. Remember our children, because they're they're trying, but they're having a hard time. That's the words in the song. Everybody pray now. Okay, so with that, I want to thank you all. And of course, the president of the 
inviting me here to do this. So I have to run real quick right back, but uh, again, uh, I have to attend a funeral as well today, so I just wanted to welcome you all here. Hopefully you all have a beautiful, wonderful year. There's a lot of services that are provided, and uh, I just happen to be one of them. Based on the insight, of course, our president that invited me to come and help this whole thing out, and hopefully we can uh, come on over and, and get some guidance and direction in a good way with all the staff, with uh, student services and with the college here. So with that, thank you very much. Hold me talk to you guys. Tom, Tommy's office is located in the War Eagle Vision downstairs, and his door is pretty much always open. So, um, so usually what we try to do is introduce our administrative staff, our vice presidents, um, the president, and uh, like Miss President Gourneau is a former student. She knows what it's like to sit here in orientation day, and it can be a little daunting as a former student yeah same thing and so um i can do okay so again i welcome you here and i'm going to give you the welcome i give all new students coming in the door every year for donut years i was sitting where you were sitting not literally some i think it's 34 years ago, I was a young mother with six kids. I was working two jobs. I was working as a nurse's aide and a home health care in between waiting tables and this and that. And, you know, I just, I, you know, I didn't even know the college existed, to be honest with you. It was a hell of a lot, so, excuse my language, <laughs> heck of a lot smaller. Um, we had an average enrollment of about 100 when I started. But one of my friends told me, just go check it out. So I walked in the doors here and the same day it happened to be registration day. And I walked out of there registered full time. And I'm going to tell you, I was pretty scared. I, I walked down those steps over there in War Eagle Vision and I got in my car and I started crying. And I said, I'm never going to go back because they're going to know I'm going to fail and they're going to know how dumb I am. So I went home and that night and I thought about it and I thought, okay, I'll go one day. After that, I can count the days on one hand that I missed class. I absolutely fell in love with it. And I, I, can't, I was a decent high school student, but you know, I, I played the social part. I loved to hang out with my friends. Ended up having me and my husband had our first kid when we were in high school. So I wasn't gonna go back to school, oh no. But I tell you, I absolutely fell in love with education all over again. And I'm going to tell you, the institution has really been good to me and my family. My kids have went to college, you know, and without me coming here, I don't know whether that that would have happened. I would hope it would have, but it might not have. Um, I'm almost done with my doctorate right now. And so, you know, if I can do it, every one of you there can do it. It, it, the potential, the FBCC is an awesome school. Take advantage of it. And especially at this point in time when it's free, you can go to school for free. That is awesome. So, you know, my door is always open. If you guys need anything, you want to talk, I'm in this building, just straight down the hall here. Um, and I also say, tell students, you can't come and give me an excuse of why you can't come to school because I've heard them all and I've tried them all. So go to school every day, attend class, whether it's online or in person. That's 75% of the battle right there, you being there. If you miss class, you miss out on that, that lesson for the day. You miss out on what you can learn that day. So attend class and you'll do awesome. So thank you guys and all of those of you online. Um, I hope to be able to see you on campus at some point. So take advantage of our student services, take advantage of our counseling, of our um, 
workshops and our fun things on campus. And I'll see you around on campus. So thank you. All right. Thank you, President Gourneau. Uh, thank you. She's a very busy lady, always in meetings, uh, but she's very inspirational. So she's been a great mentor and, and help at the college. Um, we're because our um, orientation is a hybrid format. It's it's online and in person. Um, I, I also want to introduce our other vice presidents. Uh, we have one in the back, Mr. Uh, Craig Smith. If you could come forward and, and introduce yourself uh, in front of the mics, uh, Mr. Uh, Craig Smith is our uh, vice president for institutional development, and he's also our uh, our athletic director for the program. We have a uh, uh, the Buffalo Chasers basketball team and, and whatnot. He might be able to share a little bit of insight about that, but he, he's a product of uh, Fort Peck Community College as well, was on the, the board of directors, I believe, for a number of years. So, um, so if you could just give him your attention, please. Okay, good morning. Welcome. Um, actually, I just heard there was muffins and eggs and stuff here, yeah. so I snuck over here. Um, yeah, I guess, uh, you know, it's always exciting, the beginning of a new year, um, new faces around campus. Like Elijah said, um, you know, I've been involved with the community college in one way or another. Um, I was on their board of directors when I was fairly young, um, and then uh, moved over as an employee about 22 and a half, 23 years ago. So, um, you know, I've kind of grown old here at the college. Um, you know, I think, uh, um, like Haven said, you know, I, I think you're gonna have enough uh, support and assistance from staff and faculty to make, uh, you know, to be as successful and rewarding as you want to make it be here at the college. Um, you know, our student support, student services um, department has a lot of resources that are out there for, for uh, student assistance, um, as well as, you know, faculty and staff across campus supporting all student, uh, student successes. Um, you know, it's, it's almost like one big happy family. Um, not always happy, but uh, you know, we have our times, but overall, it's a good place to uh, to start your educational career. And whether you're going on for a, a higher degree than what is offered here, or you're uh, you know getting into the workforce through your degree, um, whether it be in in uh, academics or vocations, I think you're you're making a good choice by starting here. So welcome. Um, like like Elijah said too, um, I, I kind of I'm the athletic director in charge of the uh, basketball programs. We are going back full force this year after COVID kind of stopped the tribal colleges um, um, basketball seasons the past couple of years. So anybody that uh, is interested, uh, um, you know, we'll, we'll probably be having a meeting about mid-September, um, so watch for flyers, emails. I know a lot of things come out through student emails, so be sure and check your emails. So welcome, good luck. Thank All you. Right. All right, thank you, Craig. And there's another lady I want to introduce. She's the um, Vice President for Academic Affairs. Um, her name is uh, Miss Carrie Schumacher. She is uh, joining us virtually through Zoom webinar. So um, I believe uh, she's on right now. So, so Carrie, if you want to uh, introduce yourself, we, we would appreciate that. Thanks, Elijah. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. I hear we have a, um, a decent crowd in the auditorium. So that's exciting to see after some of years of being completely virtual over the last couple of years and then we have a good attendance online so um, as an administrator i'm happy to see that happy to see people are feel, feeling comfortable joining us back on campus and seeing all the familiar faces that you're used to seeing um, as elijah said i'm carrie schumacher i'm the interim academic vice president at the college um, over the last two years academics has just made leaps and bounds i think and i think it's done 
it's done well for the community. I think it's opened doors for um, community members, students that wouldn't have typically been able to attend college because they're working full time. Like President Gorno mentioned, you know, this morning when she was working three jobs, you know, that, that's scary as a person to, to, to think I'm going to go to school and have to be in a classroom, you know, throughout the day when I have children and I'm helping with my grandparents and my parents and all those kinds of things. So we have a strong, strong um, set of faculty that are here to assist you and help you in every path on your journey, every day of this journey. Um, we've sat through two days of orientation the last two days um, and just spent time networking and figuring out the best way that we can continue to deliver our courses in person and online so you guys can be successful. If you have any questions, um, I can, my email and my phone number are always available. Um, as a student, I ask that you um, communicate with your instructors as much as possible. Um, they really are the key to um, the success that you might need in helping you on your journey. But I'm here to support in however I can. Um, as Craig said, basketball, AHEC starting back up. So lots of different things are gonna be taking place over the next nine months of the school year that haven't happened in the last couple of years. So look forward to seeing you around campus via email, text, see a lot of people out in public and good luck on your semester. All right, thank you, Carrie. Yeah, we also have another uh, vice president, uh, I believe it's for community services and special programs. Her name is Olivia Hedress. She's not able to make it today, uh, but you'll definitely get to know her uh, as you continue your educational journey here at Fort Pitt Community College. Uh, so with that, we'll, we'll transition to the next uh, part of our agenda. Uh, just an overview of student services. We'll do a welcome uh, from all the staff that are here with us today. Some of them might be online. Um, but first to my right is uh, uh, Nora. I'll let her introduce herself. She could kind of maybe explain a little bit about her job. Uh, you'll definitely get to know her throughout this presentation and throughout uh, your, your educational journey here at Fort Peck. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Nora Abushaban. I do recruitment and retention. And now that you guys are already in the door, um, it's basically more so retention. And I'll explain to you what that means. What retention means is making sure that you all have everything that you need to do well in your classes. But here at FPCC, we go beyond just the grades you get in your classes. We want you to be successful in your life. So whatever you think that limit is or, or you know, how far you can actually go in terms of being successful and having a happy, fulfilling, meaningful life, I want you to think past that barrier that you have in your mind and go further. Um, what I'm here to support you in is more than just academic success, but holistic success, mental health, having happy, healthy relationships. Um, if you want to, you know, pursue any sort of career path, you know, we're here to make sure that you're able to achieve what it is that you want to achieve and expect more from yourself than maybe what you expected from yourself walking in through these doors. Um, my office is in the War Eagle Vision building. I am available for students who just want to walk in, talk about whatever's going on, uh, or make an appointment. Um, bottom line is I'm really here for you guys. So if you have an idea of where you want to go, I can help you get there, just as all of us can. Right. Thank you, Nora. Um, we also have a, a trio program, and the director is here, and I believe some of his staff might be here as well. But David James, if you could come forward. Dechia Hu, he can introduce himself. He's a former student, kind of worked his way up the ranks. One of our uh, success stories here at the college. Hi, good morning students. My name is David James. I am the director of the TRIO program here at Fort Peck Community College. Uh, some of you I've met already, and uh, some of you I'm sure to uh, hope to meet soon. So uh, a little about myself. I am a student from here. I'm an enrolled member of the tribe, and I sat exactly where you're sitting at one time. I uh, 
attended here and I went to Northern and I got my bachelor's degree. And then I started working here six years ago to this month. So I've worked my way up to uh, director of the TRIO program. And uh, you're probably wondering what TRIO is. Uh, TRIO is a department education based grant to help first generation low income and disabled students. So uh, we do a lot of tutoring stuff. Uh, I have one of my tutors back there is Melinda Stewart. Uh, we are also looking for tutors. So if you're an exceptional student in uh, math, English, uh, the sciences, come talk to me. Uh, I have an application for that position and uh, we pay about 15 bucks an hour. So uh, come talk to me. Uh, I have two employees, Antoinette Simons, uh, who is online and uh, she is our career coach. So if you're looking to learn how to fill out an application or write a cover letter or something like that, she can help you do that. Uh, we also have a uh, Deborah Grandboyce and she is our assistant. So, okay. Uh, that's all I've got. Yeah, very good, right. very good. Thank you, David. Yep. <laughs> um, I also want to ask um, our student resource specialist, She's like our all-star over at Student Services. You walk in that door over at the Warrior Vision. She's that first person you see there. Every week, she's making fry bread and, and dazzling everybody with her cooking skills. So you'll get to know her very well. But Darcy, if you could just maybe introduce yourself real quick. Yes, my name is Darcy. Um, as you said, I'm the first person you see over there. I can usually help you with your gas filters, um, internet. Um, just anything you might need, just stop on in. I can get you to the right person. Yeah. Nice to see you guys. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Darcy. Um, and I just want to reiterate, we are doing a drawing, uh, a couple different drawings for a Buffalo Chasers jacket, but you got to be present to, uh, to win, including if you're online. And so Darcy, and then there's some staff that's going to put your name in the hat. Everybody that signed in, uh, we'll be doing a drawing, a couple of different ones later on. Uh, who else do we have here? Is Lynette Clark in the house? I seen her back there. We want to introduce our director. Okay. Good morning. Like this? Not too short. Good morning, everybody. My name is Lynette Clark. I'm the financial aid director here at Fort Peck Community College. I have, this is my 30th year. October 1st, I'll start my 31st year here. So um, been to quite, quite a few uh, orientations. So it's good to see new faces every year when we get them. Um, I will be doing, are we talking about our stuff now or later? No, just uh, later, but okay. right now, just leave it. So I have some stuff that I will share with you guys when it's my turn to talk, but just wanted to introduce myself. My office is across the street at Student Services. If you haven't seen me yet, you should, okay? Um, any, everybody's welcome into my office right there in the center of things right next to the registrar's office and the admissions office. So come over and visit. So we can talk about money because we all know money makes things a little bit simpler for us and it doesn't solve everything, but it makes things a little easier. So come over and um, I'll also share with you guys um, when it's my turn to come on and share with you guys what we have here to offer. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Lynette. There's a couple other individuals uh, that are here with us. Um, Melinda Stewart's our, our dorm RA. She also helps out part-time over at Student Services. I don't want to put her on the spot, but she's in the back. She's really helpful, really awesome lady. Uh, and then also Miss Yellowhammer in the back. She's super helpful with the SOAR program. I don't want to put her on the spot, but uh, in the back, she, she's super helpful. So I want to acknowledge her and all that good stuff. Um, 
So with that, that's pretty much the short and sweet for introductions for student uh, services uh, overview. I think what we'll do is I'll ask Nora if she can come up and, oh, let me pump the brakes. I, I forgot about Miss Michelle Day. You can up here. Michelle Day, uh, are you on the call with us? Okay. Yes. I want to introduce uh, Michelle. She's our um, registrar over at the War Eagle Vision Building. She's part of our student services team. She has a sidekick named Jackie Spotted Bird. Uh, I don't know if she's able to join us on the call, but I want to give Michelle the, the floor. She can at least introduce herself. Hi, I'm Michelle Day. I am the registrar. I'm located at the War Eagle Vision Building. Um, you guys can come in here and check up classes, get registered. We're over here waiting for students as or else you will be with you right now. So don't be afraid to come in and see us. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Um, didn't really have good audio on that, but uh, later on, she'll probably come over. We'll do a campus tour after lunch. We'll go over there and visit. Sounds good. Uh, so I want to introduce again, uh, Miss Nora Abu Shaban. We're going to go over a PowerPoint we got here. I'll just switch places. Oh, okay. Sounds like I'm in a diaper seat now. <laughs> I don't use mics like Elijah's. I feel like really cool when I do. <laughs> awesome. So welcome to Buffalo Chaser Country, y'all. We went through the president's welcome. So let's talk about steps to registration. Um, you guys have registered. This is also for the benefit of anybody who you know hasn't registered yet, but they might come across this on Facebook or heck, you know, maybe you registered, but there is a step that could be helpful that maybe you're missing. So let's get through it. So um, a great way to start registration is with advising. We have an enrollment advisor. Uh, his name is Michael Cooper. Uh, he's in Warrigal Vision on the upper floor so you just go up the steps um so if you are interested in you know exploring different career options before you pick which classes you're going to take or picking a degree program we're absolutely here to help you with that um, by going through advising and being like a little choosier with the classes that you're taking you can actually save a lot of money uh over time for your college degree um, there are some courses that, you know, double up, meet requirements um, at other four-year universities in Montana. Um, and we can also help choose the best class format for you. So, for example, if you have, you know, kids and you want to, you know, prefer to, like, stay at home, we have classes that are completely online. That might be more convenient for you rather than coming into, like, an in-person class in the middle of the day. Um, so... Ideally after advising, and it's never too late to come in for advising. So if you already picked your classes, but now you're kind of like having second thoughts or you want to like really explore your options, you can still come in. It's not too late. Um, the next step would be to register online at fpcc.edu. Um, this year we have a new COVID-19 financial assistance application. Um, if you filled out one last semester or the year before, um, just make sure you redo it and we'll make sure that the link goes out. I don't believe it is on the website yet, um, but we'll make sure it gets up there. Um, so um, make sure that you come and take the AccuPlacer test. This is to make sure that you're taking classes that are at a suitable level for you. you know, for example, if you're like an ace at math, you don't want to take a math course that's like too easy, that's not going to fulfill your requirements. And you don't want to be placed in like a course that's like too difficult either, because that's that's just too hard. <laughs> We have a student profile survey, um, and in the survey, you know, students can know if they need a laptop, if they need internet, um, you know, what kind of responsibilities they have at home. Um, it's also a good way for us to get our demographics. Um, so if you haven't done your profile survey, please make sure that you do. 
Um, we have trio forms available. So if you are, I believe, a first generation student, if you're the first person in your family to go to college, um, or if you have a disability that you would like reasonable accommodations for that you can provide documents to verify that disability, um, you know, please do the form and get in touch with David James, our TRIO director. Um, the next step would be your financial aid applications. So American Indian College Fund, I believe the deadline for that passed. Um, we also encourage all of our students to fill out the FAFSA. Um, it's sort of like the, the gateway to other financial uh, you know, scholarships and those applications. Um, we ask for three things when you uh, register, uh, your high school or GED transcripts, uh, your college transcripts, if you have taken college classes at a different institution, and your tribal enrollment, if that's applicable. Um, and then after that's brought in, we sit with you, we form your academic plan, we get you registered for classes, and I really recommend you guys, if you haven't done this yet, to go to Trio and learn how to use Canvas. It's the home for your online classes. Uh, learn, you know, about, uh, you know, what your Jix is. It's basically where you get all your, um, your transcripts, your uh, course schedule, and, you know, learn how to use Cengage. And for returning students, even if you're a returning student, come to advising. It, it really doesn't hurt, it only helps. Um, as you can see, it's very similar. You're gonna register online. You're still gonna wanna do the uh, financial assistance application for COVID monthly stipends. Um, you still wanna make sure you're on track with your academic plan and get your classes registered. Financial aid information is the same. And our our next topic that, we're, um, that we've moved to is Cengage. So what is Cengage? Let's talk about it. So all of our uh, students have access to free online e-textbooks. And in these e-textbooks are different online platforms. You might see something called MindTap. You might see something called WebAssign, where your instructor can link coursework directly into the textbook. So instead of having to click around and you know, find the assignments, you know, print out the assignments, upload them. It's just right in your textbook. Um, and knowing how to use this is going to be crucial in being able to complete your classes uh, successfully. If you are, you know, somebody who wants a, a hard copy textbook, you know, for the semester, um, you can rent one out from Cengage for about eight bucks and shipping and handling uh, for each book. Um, there is a mobile app for Cengage, which is very helpful. Um, Cengage includes different study tools and different college success and career readiness tips and resources. So as I mentioned, there's MindTap, there's WebAssign, there's OWL for chemistry. So I mentioned the Career Center, uh, the college success page and different study tools. So how does Cengage work? Uh, you wanna go to Canvas, you want to log in, uh, navigate to your course. Um, your instructor may have a link that links to the textbook um, in the module section. If you're not sure how to get onto Cengage, uh, ask your instructor, and your instructor will definitely be able to help you. So when you do get onto Cengage, um, if you already have an account with Cengage, you're going to log in. If you don't have a Cengage account, then register now. And this is something that kind of trips people up at the beginning, but once they realize they need to make a new account with Cengage, if they're first time users, it's easy. Then you're gonna continue and enroll in your course. If you need help with Cengage, this URL, techcheck.cengage.com is helpful because it'll let you know if your computer is set up in such a way that Cengage can actually operate properly. And we have a lot of different layers of technical support that you can access. Support.sengage.com is very helpful. You can engage on the phone, uh, through chat. Uh, they have good customer service. Um, that number is 800-354-9706. You're breezing right along. I like it. 
So uh, as I mentioned for physical books, uh, you're going to want to, first of all, ask your instructor if their course has physical books. Um, some do, some don't. The Native American studies instructors do tend to use physical books. Uh, automotive tends to use physical books. Um, but I would uh, reach out and verify. Uh, like I said before, um, you're in, some instructors do have physical books that so they can loan you out. You don't have to go through Cengage. Um, but if they don't have a book for loan and you want a hard copy, then you are going to have to end up going through a Cengage. But just make sure that if you didn't purchase the book yourself, um, you're going to be expected to return the book. So make sure you get it back to either your instructors or to Cengage at the end of the semester. So how do you rent a book? There is instructions right here, sengage.force.com. Um, you can select the rental period and add the rental title to your cart. Um, they tend to ship within one or two business days after the order is received. And then when you return it, you're gonna use a prepaid shipping label to ship the book back, easy peasy. So let's talk about digital tools. Um, because I'm assuming that a lot of you guys are taking online classes. It's just, you know, really convenient and easy for our busy schedules these days. So uh, accessing your student email account. I click this link. Is it gonna work? Let's find out, guys. Our IT director, Jack Sprague, made a handy video for us. Oh, you're right. Oh, you're right here. Okay. So it'll be. Oops. After we get through this section, we're gonna have a, our first prize drawing. It doesn't work, and then if you share onto a browser, I can just that's it. Doesn't even matter. Yeah, okay, they should be able to see it. Really can't work. If you're here, you're probably having a little difficulty technology-wise, either with Canvas or email. First thing first, before you even get started, get a pencil, get a paper, pause the video, check the graphic. You need to reach out to us immediately, either by phone, 406-768-6300, or by contacting us through the website, fpcc.edu contact. You will have to have your student ID number, 
your actual student email account and we can supply you with any of your passwords from there. So if you don't have that information, pause the video and get that first and we'll get you going. Welcome to this video. This one will be specifically talking about your student email account, why it's important to you, a few features within the account that is extremely powerful, that's paid for by us, free to you. Go ahead, grab a seat, let's get started. Again, the first thing we're going to want to do is go to our website, FPCC. So go to www.fpcc.edu in your browser navigate to the hyperlink for FPCC email. At this point, you're going to be redirected um, to a login screen for Microsoft. It is login.microsoftonline.com. Ideally, once you get to this point, a really good practice is either to add it to your favorites um, or simply highlight the entire URL, copy it, and paste it into a shortcut on your desktop just to make it a nice easy access for you in the future. But what we want to do is get you going and logged in. Once you've reached the Outlook login screen, which is your Microsoft 365 account, your free licensing that goes along with your student enrollment, the, the syntax is very important. You're going to need to enter your first name, dot, your last name at, and here's where we always seem to get into trouble, student.fpcc.edu. Not students plural, not fpcc.edu, student.fpcc.edu, exactly like you're going to see on the screen. You're going to hit next, you'll be prompted to put in your password. Once you've gotten into your account, you can see now that it defaults to Outlook. Outlook is our email client that we use. It's our official communication tool for our students and our faculty. It is what we communicate with you for scholarship offers, any opportunities that come up. We will not use your private accounts, so this is your nice generic account that you can interact with us, no issues. The one big thing that we want to make sure you understand is once you're in your Outlook, right here on the screen, in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see the app launcher. When you open the apps, you're going to have access to a number of extra apps that are all part of your licensing. So not only does it have a communication to Outlook, you're going to have access to Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Teams, anything that you might need to further success or further assignment to finish your assignments in um, your classroom, all available for free once you're signed up with FPCC. So if you have any other issues with your email or you're having difficulty logging in, again, reach out to IT, give us a call, 406-768-6300, or contact us on the graphic below or the graphic that you see that contains our URL, fpcc.edu slash contact, submit the form, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks. You dream, you plan, you work every hour, every day, every night. There is no such thing as a small business. All business is... Thanks for checking on our website. It, if you're here, you're probably having a little difficulty technology-wise, either with Canvas, your email. First thing first, before you even get started, get a pencil, get a paper, pause the video, check the graphic. You need to reach out to us immediately, either by phone, 406-768-6300, or by contacting us through the website, fpcc.edu slash contact. You will have to have your student ID number, your actual student email account, and we can supply you with any of your passwords from there. So if you don't have that information, pause the video and get that first and we'll get you going. We're gonna go through a real quick how-to video today discussing Canvas. 
get you all squared away. So if you can, grab a pencil, grab a piece of paper, take a few notes, have a seat, and we'll get started. Um, always and best practices for us is always go to www.fpcc.edu. There you'll get a lot of references, but we'll start with getting into our Canvas account. Uh, once you navigate over to FPCC Canvas, you'll click on that and it's going to redirect you to a website, fpcc.instructure.com. Uh, you'll find it in your URL. We'll do a quick little bonus tip right here. Ideally, once you get to this point, a really good practice is either to add it to your favorites, um, add it to your bookmarks if you're using an Apple product, or simply highlight the entire URL, copy it, and paste it into a shortcut on your desktop just to make it a nice, easy access for you in the future. Once we're redirected to the URL, you'll enter in your student ID number, enter in your password, and there you go. So now you've successfully logged into Canvas, the first thing you're going to notice is in a policy acceptance screen, you have to select agree. It's not selected by default. Hit submit. We're redirected to our course site. You will see now that you're in your dashboard and one of the things to take note of immediately is on your course list right here where the cursor is, you will need to accept any courses that you've been invited into. Once you're completed, you will also see a pop-up screen talking about your tour. This is a great thing to go through whenever you get a chance to do it. You don't have to do it now, but if you do select not now, it's always available in the help button. And now you're in Canvas and there's all your classes and you're good to go for the semester. Have a great semester and hope to see you again next semester. One more video and then the prize drawing on. Thanks for checking on a website. It, if you're here, you're probably having a little difficulty technology-wise, either with Canvas, your email. First thing first, before you even get started, get a pencil, get a paper, pause the video, check the graphic. You need to reach out to us immediately, either by phone, 406-768-6300, or by contacting us through the website, fpcc.edu slash contact. You will have to have your student ID number, your actual student email account, and we can supply you with any of your passwords from there. So if you don't have that information, pause the video and get that first and we'll get you going. Today we're going to be discussing JICS, a little bit of a complicated subject. Um, why is it important to you? What does it even mean? We always refer to it, or you may hear staff refer to it as JICS. It's your My FPCC portal. What it's going to allow you to do is check your grades, your midterm grades, your bills, pre-register for next semester. So it is a pretty important interface that you should be aware of. Um, with that being said, go ahead and have a seat. We'll take a quick run and see if we can get you logged in. As always, start with www.fpcc.edu. Once you've located our website, our homepage, you'll need to navigate to the link labeled My FPCC JICS. You'll click on that link. It's going to take you to a login screen. Upper right hand corner is going to be username password. Again, best practices, bonus tip. Go ahead and bookmark this, add it to your favorites, or simply select and highlight, copy and paste the entire URL into a shortcut on your desktop. Makes it easier for you in the future. Now here's the trick. Where it says username, it's actually your student ID number. Not your email address, not your name, your student ID number, then your password, and you're logged in. So as you can see here, lots of stuff, lots of business, lots of busy screens for you as a student. Probably most importantly is the student tab. Um, will allow you to get in, pull reports on your midterm grades, look at your billing under finance, advising, registration. Um, not something you need day one to get going for classes, but definitely something you need to manage your career as a student to make sure you're progressing the correct way. If you have any more issues with JICS or have more, want more information regarding technology, feel free to call IT at FPCC 406.
Okay, so I just wanted everyone to be aware that um, those three videos are super helpful. If you go to our YouTube channel, if you go to YouTube, go to Fort Peck Community College, you'll see a string of playlists. Uh, one of them is language and culture. One of them is um, Buffalo Chasers podcast. And there's one called um, How To Tips, I believe. All three of those videos are located there. So um, try not to feel too overwhelmed. Wherever you're at within this process, in any of these steps, whether you're just starting, if you're sitting in um, on the Facebook live stream, the webinar, or if you're here uh, in the auditorium, if you're not completely registered, that's fine. This is just an overview. Right after this, after lunch, we can go over to the War Eagle Vision. We're going to um, offer some sack lunches over there for those of you that can make it. Um, and then after that, we're going to do a campus tour, but then we can walk you through individually uh, through any one of these processes. So try not to get too overwhelmed. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take about a five to 10 minute break. Um, I'm going to allow some of our staff opportunity to, to check on Facebook. Um, anyone that is joining us through the our, our Facebook uh, live stream and, the, and you're a student, put your name in the comment section. That way we'll put your name in the drawing for a, a Cho Buffalo Chasers jacket, embroidered logo and everything. And same thing on the webinar. Um, I'm going to allow our staff a few minutes to kind of sort through the names and then everybody that uh, is here in the auditorium with us will make sure and uh, get you in on this um, this drawing. So with that, we will take about a five to 10 minute break and then we will announce the winner uh, shortly. So try not to go anywhere. But yeah, grab some meat to eat if you can and we'll be right back.
Okay, we are back. Uh, so hopefully everybody got their name in the hat. Um, we're going to do one drawing. We'll do two drawings. And then we'll do the last one at the end of the presentation. And so, Darcy, if you could come forward here in front of the camera, we'll have Nora pick out one lucky name from the hat. And the lucky winner is Colleen C. Colleen C. The winner, winner. winner. Congratulations. Uh, we have a buffalo paper basket right after the presentation. Uh, stop on over to the War Eagle Vision building. Give us your size of your, your jacket size and we'll hook you up. And we'll do one more. One more. Yeah, we'll do one more. And the second winner of a Buffalo Chasers jacket is Kelly Sargent. Kelly Sargent. Congratulations. So we got Colleen C. And Kelly Sargent. So uh, congratulations to both of you. Right. So we'll just do another little overview of. Side of the student services team. As soon as my screen pops back up here. Okay. So yours truly, Vice President of Student Services. Um, in our department, uh, which is comprised mostly of staff at the War Eagle Vision Building. Okay. Uh, Poplar is the main campus, although we do have another campus over in Wolf Point. Um, we're going to do our best to have at least one staff member from student services over at the Wolf Point campus, uh, if possible. Um, it's, there's going to be an actual office space, but there's a full computer lab over there. So we're going to try to have some food, uh, gaming activities, all that good stuff. Uh, Lynette Clark introduced herself earlier, Michelle Day. Uh, Jackie spotted uh, bird works pretty much in tandem with Michelle Day. Uh, she wasn't able to make it today. Darcy, of course, our all-star over there. And then Shane Moran works as our high set instructor. That's uh, a program for people wanting to get their GED, otherwise known as high set. His office is located at the War Eagle Vision building as well. Uh, Nora, again, she's super awesome, super helpful. In fact, I believe one day out of the week we'll have you over at the Dumont building, right? And Wolf yes. Point. So you're going to be seeing a lot of emails from Nora, myself, uh, and Trio as well. Michael Cooper, I don't know if Michael has had an opportunity to join us on the Zoom call. I don't think he's with us here today uh, in person, but Michael Cooper is the uh, online enrollment advisor. And so later on, if you go over to the Wargo Vision building, He's going to help guide all students uh, 
basically with uh, advising from that, that first, uh, your first year, and then he'll kind of pass the baton off to your academic advisor. So um, it, it's super important that you connect with your advisors um, because they all know all the intricacies and then of the whole program and how it uh, transposes to the career offerings per degree. And later on, Nora will give a little overview of some of this information in the student success seminar presentation. So, um, but yeah, and then David James, he did an introduction earlier. He'll be back to do more of a detailed overview of his program. Uh, Antoinette and Deborah Grandboys uh, work in his program as well. And earlier, I don't know if you're able to hear him very well for those of you that were online, but Mr. Tommy Christian, cultural liaison, that guy's famous in powwow country, man. He's like a, up in Canada. He's a world champion, uh, traditional dancer, cultural person. Uh, he identifies as Dakota, Lakota, and Nakota. Uh, he's he's uh, super helpful. Um, definitely um, get to know him, and he he's definitely points you in the right direction. Um, in fact, there's some talking circles and whatnot that he's a part of in a Buffalo Chasers podcast. We'll get to that a little bit more later. Okay, and so feel free to chime in anytime here, uh, Nora, but online learning, it's its a little different. We've had a few years at the college to kind of adjust our process. We've gotten every year we get a little bit better. Okay, and so those videos that we created uh, earlier with email, Canvas, Jigs, those were created so that we didn't have to tell the story individually over and over. You guys can just access it wherever you want. We have to get students and staff and faculty, we're all learning, but we have to get into this process where every day we're checking our emails, first thing, okay? But obviously you need a laptop and you need internet to do that, right? So one of the cool things that I think Fort Peck Community College has done is that not many colleges have done this to this extent, is that we have basically provided all students with a free laptop worth the tunes of hundreds of dollars, uh, we even provide free internet, okay? And so, but there's a few little catches, little caveats to that. You have to be a degree-seeking student, degree-seeking, and you need to be at least half-time, okay? So what does that mean? What is degree-seeking? That means that you declare a major, okay? You can be a student and be non-degree-seeking. That's a thing. You can totally do that. But we always highly encourage students to be degree-seeking because that opens up a whole different set of options for you in terms of funding and other uh, goodies that are associated with that. And that's just the way um, a lot of tribal colleges, our, our tribal colleges is structured, is how we get funding in order for us to help pay you. Uh, you need to be an online or a degree seeking student. And so those laptops, um, they're great. I mean, you can take them home with you and whatnot, but the only issue is, is you have to stay a student. You only get one. And you got to sign a, a, a form saying that you are going to uh, remain a, at least a half-time status student. And if you do that for two consecutive semesters, that laptop's yours. Okay. We're trying to make it to where you don't just sign up, get a laptop, and then dok shai lo, see you later. We want to make sure that you honor your commitment and then you can keep that laptop. So those are... Uh, awesome resources that not a lot of colleges are able to do, but we, we provide that for you guys free of charge. Okay, in Poplar, main campus at the War Eagle Vision Building, uh, we have a full computer lab, two labs basically, one at the student services reception area, other one down in Trio. If you're in Wolf Point, the community lab is available over there as well. We've done our best to accommodate a COVID environment where we, we can spread the computers out. They should all have a webcam and microphone because it's super important that you get familiar with learning how to engage your, your, your coursework through uh, video conferencing. You need a legit mic. You need a legit internet connection bandwidth. Um, and we highly encourage you to um, if you have any issues or challenges, that's what we're here for. Because and I, I was visiting with uh, faculty that came back here a few days ago. The most sacred relationship 
at any college, but at Fort Peck Community College is between the faculty and the student. Someone like me and our department, we're just here for support. And so whether that's providing uh, uh, training to students on how to access um, any technology issues, if you're like hung up on the books, how to access them in, in Canvas, which is known as a learning management system, LMS, there's different kinds like Moodle, but we use Canvas, okay? <laughs> and those are all located pretty much online. Later on, I'll show you how to access all this stuff on our, our webpage. The videos that you watch are a little dated. They're about a year, year and a half old. And we've done some pretty uh, cool renovations to our webpage. So some of those uh, web links got switched around a little bit. And so we'll kind of go over that. But um, in response to COVID panic, shift to online learning. So yeah, so many of our courses are either fully online or they're hybrid format. Few of them are just 100% in person. I like the hands-on courses. Yeah, like your uh, most of your voc ed, like if you're a truck driving student, kind of hard to do that online, right? But you can, uh, else do we got like welding, we got- And some of our cultural arts courses, like beadwork, uh, moccasin making, you know, that's, that's pretty hands-on. So that's in person only. Yeah, yeah. And so, and, and being a student, there's some other, cool, this is my plug for my other uh, grant work that I do. So there's some other really cool opportunities. If you're a student, you'll, you'll have um, an opportunity to participate in cultural workshops. Those are in person as well. We do like a bow making uh, workshop. Those of you that want to go old school, make your own bow, hunt old school, uh, November 5th, 6th, and 7th, I believe. You heard it here first. Those are the dates. We have a, a bow maker coming. So there's a lot of cool opportunities for you to be part of stuff like that. And make sure you take advantage of the cultural workshops. These workshops are led by distinguished elders who have a lot of knowledge passed on to them from their grandfathers and grandmothers. And so you really want to cherish the time we have with our elders while they're still here and get that knowledge firsthand. Um, it's, it's a real gift to the community. I encourage everybody to attend if they can. Okay. And then absolutely 100%. Thank you for sharing that, Nora. Um, but online learning, it gets confusing on what it means. And, and sometimes different colleges have different interpretations of what that means and their, the way they do things. So if you went to a different college or university and you're, you're onboarding with us, we're going to have a little different terminology. In high school, um, they might have done things a little different. They might have had a different LMS program and they might have called it Moodle or whatever, right? And so, but with us, there's two terms I want you to get familiar with asynchronous and polysynchronous. So just refer to the slide, but asynchronous classes are those classes that are basically just self-paced. You don't log in at any subscribed time, uh, but there are gonna be deadlines and whatnot as posted in the Canvas portal. So when you log into your Canvas portal, you're gonna get an individual set of um, user ID and password that don't share with anybody and Many, many times students lose those until you get familiar with how to store them, attract them, keep them in a secure place. But always refer to your syllabus. Your syllabus per class is kind of like the, uh, the, the contract that your faculty member for that course has with you regarding the times, dates, the type of books that they're going to use, when they're going to meet. So just definitely refer to that. And then polysynchronous classes, these are the classes that were more traditionally are at a set time. These are the type of classes that I teach, either here at other places that I work. Um, every Tuesday, say at 6.30, there's going to be an online Zoom link and we're going to learn Dakota language or Cinnaboyne language. Um, even though technically it's, it's online via Zoom, it's still polysynchronous. So... Don't let those those terms uh, confuse you, but I wanted to let you know that that is a thing. Yeah, and with polysynchronous classes, there is a set class time, and you can show up to that class location in person, or you can tune in over Zoom. So that's what we mean by hybrid. So you have like basically two options for the same class. Just make sure you attend class. <laughs> okay, so... With, um, there's a few other things before I get into the degree programs I want to let students be aware of. One is 
being a student, you're going to be heavily expected and uh, dependent on your student email. It's through the student email that you're going to receive so much information um, just because everything's online. So you might some students might not physically even be on campus. We have many that are either on the webinar or on Facebook that live in different states. We had at one point when the pandemic hit, we had students living as far as away as um, New York, um, Nevada. And so um, those are the different types of uh, things that you can expect. That'll be your, your student experience will be a diverse set of students from all over the place. Um, and so with the, the email, there's a program that we use called Regroup. Okay, Regroup is a mass notification uh, program. It's a paid for service. Um, I use it almost every day. And whether you know it or not, and you're, if you've already registered for classes, you've probably already received a Regroup message from me directly. Uh, it's kind of a, a cool program in that I can, it's a cloud-based service where I can send you a notification, almost like an email where I can send it to your, your cell phone, your, your landline phone, an email address with a, a click of the button, whether, okay, there's a, uh, a fire, there's a fire drill, there's whatever, any uh, pertinent information, I can send it out and you'll get in one fell swoop, I can hit the whole campus, every employee, every student. And so just be aware of that. If you see it, try not to block it or whatever. We, we try not to spam everybody, but it's important that we engage some of you that maybe aren't physically around to be over at student service. So regroup, that's a thing. The other thing, we were just talking about this earlier. So in Office 365, your student email account, uh, there's many different email programs, obviously, but we use Office 365. Um, the video that we showed earlier doesn't really do the program justice. It's a very um, powerful and a very uh, diverse program. There's a lot of um, apps built within it that are for students completely free of charge. So let's say you need to do a... Uh, access a Word document, but you don't have Word at home on your computer or your laptop. If you log in, you have access to the internet, you log into your student email account. On the top left-hand side, I can show you later, but there's a drop-down key. You can access uh, Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and there's like two or three other um, apps. One is called um, OneDrive. You, can, you have your own calendar, uh, and there's Teams, okay? But the most probably used and expected program that you'll want to use and become familiar with is Microsoft Word, just because almost every one of your classes, you're going to be expected to use it. So that's a free service. We pay Microsoft tons of money, thousands, thousands of dollars every year for students to have access to that. So, you know, you can still use your personal computer at home with your um, paid for Microsoft license that you have, but that is a free thing that I want you to be aware of. Um, oh, so when with the regroup, so that, that the message will come in <clears throat> and it might say student services on the subject line, or it's from student services. It might say from student Senate. Okay. Many times, for whatever reason, the uh, Office 365 email system, the, the spam filter will send that to the, the junk folder. And I don't know why we've tried everything to fix it. So I would highly recommend when you log in to your student email on the left panel bar, it says favorites, it says inbox, focused inbox. Just get familiar with it. There's a folder that says um, junk. Click on that. And every once in a while, there, one of our regroup messages will be in there or pet community college, Elijah Hopkins, click on it and just vet it. Make sure it's legitimate because anything that comes from any of us will be at fpcc.edu or it'll say regroup.com at the end. Then, you know, it's a thing. It's legit. You can open it up. Um, and then what I would recommend you do is that on the top, it says um, move to inbox not spam, question mark, say not spam. It'll move it to your inbox. If you do that one time, 
every email that comes from that program at that point in time will go to your inbox. And so it won't get buried or lost because it's just I'm very unfortunate and we'll continue to try and work on that. But I've seen many students that go an entire semester with not getting any email correspondence from their regroup when just because they haven't um, checked their junk folder and pulled it out. So I'm going to keep harping on this. Um, but I want to let you guys know it's a thing. When we have a student assembly, we'll share it again. Anytime you go over to the War Eagle Vision building, we'll try and let you guys know that you need to be checking that. Uh, the other thing that I wanted students to be aware of is that and that's probably going to be discussed in this presentation uh, later on. So we have a, a paid for service. It's an online tutoring program. And what's that online tutoring program called? Tutor.com. Tutor.com. So tutor.com is a godsend. It's it's for you guys. It's a paid for service. It's an, again, one of those programs that costs thousands and thousands of dollars. But as long as you're a student, you can log into it and you have access to it uh, 24 seven, 365. As long as you're a, a currently enrolled student, I'd highly encourage you to uh, take advantage of that program. And they have tutors for just about any subject you can think of. Uh, if you're writing an essay, they have tutors in writing who can, you know, look that essay over for you, give you some feedback before you submit it to your instructor. I wish I had that when I was in college. <laughs> oh, yeah, man, that would have saved me a lot of pain and misery. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so that's a thing for you guys. If you have any um, a hard time just even accessing or you forget or whatever, we'll, we'll help you out over at Student Services. But again, check your email. You'll see a link how to access it uh, through your student email account. The other thing with that, so there, that's the online part, but some of us, maybe it's like, that's not our jam, you know, we need that, that in-person tutoring. So the um, a trio program over at the War Eagle Vision Building, we have uh, in-person tutors. You heard David James, the trio director, briefly talk about that, um, but there are uh, several of them um, that are there to help you guys in, not in all areas, but usually in those key areas like uh, reading, writing, math. Yeah. So, um, so with that, what else do we have here? Talk space. So there's a section. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll, I'll wait on the talk space. Thanks. Yeah, we're going to cover talk space in my section a bit later. Okay. And then the student lounge, I'll talk about student lounge later. Okay. So with degree programs, I'll let uh, Nora kind of maybe give a little overview on this. Do you want to sit in the driver's seat? Oh, sure. Get out of your way. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty, so let's talk about degree programs. We offer, um, I'm gonna go over the three main types of programs that we offer before I get into what's offered under each type of program. We have an Associates of Arts degree program section. Now, this is a great option if you wanna transfer into a four-year institution. This is an academic degree. We have Associates of Science degrees. Also another great option if you want to transfer into a four-year institution. And we offer applied associate of science degrees. Now the AAS, the applied associate of science, this is something that is for students who already have an objective in mind as far as their vocation, the kind of job they want to work after college. Um, so if you know you want to do automotive, you want to spend two years in school, get your automotive degree, go straight into working to automotive, you know, this is a good option. The same for business technology, uh, communication technology, I, IT technology, information network, or um, being a native language instructor. <clears throat> so these degrees don't transfer over, right? Um, we always encourage students uh, who are interested in the academic degrees to you know, go further, get your bachelor's degree. Now a bachelor's degree is a four year degree. Your associate's degree is the first two years of that bachelor's, right? So you can stop at two years or you can continue and take some more advanced courses for another two years and get a bachelor's. Um, basically, the more advanced your degree is, the more doors are gonna open for you in terms of employment, 
Um, it's just also really good to be a more well-rounded and thoughtful individual um, you know, benefiting from those more advanced classes. Um, what we offer here, as far as associates of arts degrees, we offer business administration, chemical addiction studies, elementary education, uh, general studies. So all four-year programs are going to have general requirements like reading, writing, math, uh, some electives, and you can knock those out here for free. And that cuts the cost of your bachelor's degree in half by taking your first two years here and then doing your next two years uh, somewhere like MSU Billings or the University of Montana. Uh, we also offer uh, in the way of these uh, Associate of Arts degrees, uh, psychology, Native American studies, social work, uh, tribal governments, governance and administration, uh, early childhood education and criminal justice. Actually, I believe that criminal justice is an applied associate of science. Um, for our associates of science degrees, basically, um, it's like knocking out your general studies, but you're going to have more of an emphasis with a science, right? So you're going to have like an emphasis on chemistry or an emphasis in biology. Uh, we offer environmental science and pre-health, uh, pre-nursing. And uh, like I said before, it's free. And, you know, before trying out a two-year program, they want to do a one-year program, see how they like it. Um, it's going to provide you with uh, very entry-level skills and a specific occupation. So the certificate programs that we can offer <clears throat> at this time are accounting technician uh, to prepare you for an entry-level accounting and finance job, um, business assistant. Um, that's a good way to learn, you know, some general office skills uh, for entry-level office positions. Um, our cultural arts certificate is very unique to us. It's very cool. Um, you can learn how to make traditional arts and crafts, um, and you can actively preserve your culture and, you know, participate in that. And also, you know, you can earn income from selling arts and crafts, you know, like, like the aunties and grandmas say, like, if you know how to bead, you're not going to go hungry, you know, um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> the, uh, the cultural arts, um, classes that we offer here, um, dance regalia, design and creation beading, moccasin making, star quilt techniques, archery that Elijah teaches, uh, creating hand drums, hand games, and Dakota or Nakona language. And all those uh, classes I just listed are part of getting that degree, that uh, one-year certificate. So I want to just reiterate what I said before, but you know, maybe in a more visual way. Um, if you want to get into a four-year college, right? Um, if you want those credits to transfer, you want to go with an AA or an AS. And something I want to, you know, just uh, let you guys know about so you can keep in mind is that, you know, you can get your Associate of Arts in, say, psychology, and then do your four year in something completely different like business. Um, it's a good way to test your interests. And especially because our classes right now are free. You know, so let's, let's say I, I'm interested in social work, but you know, I'm not sure if I want to do it for four years. I can do a two-year program here. And if I'm interested in social work, I can do two more years and get a bachelor's in that. Or I can go in a different direction. It's a good way to, you know, start stacking those degrees. Um, and uh, our vocational degrees, um, our Associate of Applied Science, our AAS degrees, and our one-year certificates, uh, those do not transfer but the intention is to get you ready for employment right after you graduate. But it's going to be employability for something very specific. Uh, the academic programs tend to have a little more flexibility, be more open-ended. So we do have some cool partnerships with Montana colleges. Uh, we have some articulation agreements in place. Um, an articulation agreement is basically a partnership between two institutions where they agree to recognize and accept credits towards a degree. So these colleges have agreed to accept our credits for uh, when our students want to transfer. So uh, if you complete your, for example, your business administration program here, our AA, there is a four-year program at MSU Northern where you can complete 
um, your um, business administration program there. We have a two plus two program with uh, University of Montana in Missoula for social work. And that's cool because that's completely online. Um, so you can do your bachelor's online instead of having to you know, go to a different campus. Um, we have early childhood education at, uh, let's see, I believe uh, UM Western uh, and Dillon. Dillon. <laughs> uh, and we have elementary education uh, with MSU Northern. And I believe that the early childhood education and elementary education two plus two programs, I believe that there are like special stipends that are offered so that even while you're getting your BA, you're still gonna get some support uh, financially. Let's see, so I just wanna talk about some of the student support services that we provide. Uh, we offer financial aid. Um, Lynette is going to go over that for her section. Um, we offer scholarship assistance. Um, classes are free. Uh, there's no tuition, there's no fees this semester. And we've been doing that for the past uh, several semesters. We offer emergency aid. So let's say you go to class every day. Let's say you need a drive to get to class. For example, let's say your car breaks down and that's an impediment to you completing your program. Well, you can give us a quote and we'll pay the mechanic to fix your car um, up to a certain amount uh, every semester. We have student organizations and activities. And this is cool because it's what you guys make of it. If you wanna have an anime club on campus, then you know come hang out and we'll give you guys pizza and you guys can do an anime club. You can have an organization revolved any sort of interest that you want. Um, but you guys have the opportunity to use our spaces and create that sort of club or community. Uh, we have mentorship opportunities here. Uh, mentorship is really important. It's really good to get to know people who are at that level where you're trying to get because, you know, it's it's really special to be able to help somebody, you know, get up there with you and to share what you know. Uh, there's leadership opportunities. We offer program assistance for veterans. Uh, we offer assistance uh, with transferring to different colleges once you're done with us. Um, we have in-person tutors, 24-7 uh, online tutoring, uh, career counseling, career placement. So if you're not really sure what you want to do, we have placement tests and they can give you like a cool idea. Uh, and financial literacy and you know, making your money work for you. Uh, let's see what's next. Oh, so um, a note on student ID cards. Um, so. I I actually run the ID machine. Some of you guys have uh, already been here to see me to get your uh, campus ID. Um, so, you know, in compliance with, you know, just standard, you know, safety protocols of any like college, uh, you're gonna need to have an FPCC ID card to gain ca uh, access to any FPCC building. This shows that you're a student and that, you know, you're authorized to be here. Um, so if you live in the area or if you come to campus for you know, any amount of time, for any reason, um, you know, especially if you're taking in-person classes, come and get your ID. Um, if you live, you know, let's say you live on the other side of Montana and coming to campus isn't really, you know, something that's going to happen for you, you know, that it's okay for now, you know, don't worry about it. Um, but for students who are in the area, um, you're going to need an ID to be able to, you know, get into the buildings. Um, Right, so at this time, uh, we only have our system set up in Poplar. So um, I know there's some, you know, Wolf Point students have been asking me about uh, whether or not they need IDs. You do, uh, you know, just come to Poplar. Uh, if you wanna make an appointment with me, then, you know, feel free to do so. We also welcome walk-ins. So one of the biggest assets we have here at FPCC is preserving and you know actively getting people involved in the culture and the history here. Um, for us, it's a way to strengthen our community and it's one of our greatest strengths. Uh, we have weekly talking circles. Uh, last semester, they were only virtual. Uh, this semester, we're doing an in-person talking circle as well as virtual. Um, so the in-person talking circles are gonna be Mondays at noon uh, in the student lounge. Um, you know, so if you want to, you know, just hang out on your lunch break, you know, we're going to, you know, have some food starting out, especially, you know, come have lunch, come chat. 
Uh, you can talk about whatever's on your mind. It's a very like non-judgmental and respectful space. Uh, the virtual talking circles are cool because you get to interact with students who are all over the country. It's, it's really fun. Um, we pride ourselves our, ourselves on our indigenous values, both inside and outside the classroom. Um, Elijah was talking about the different workshops he has, and he has awesome guest speakers, both on his podcast and here in person. Um, we have art competitions. Uh, language instruction is very important. This is the only place, one of the only places in the world where you're going to really be able to learn Dakota or Nakona, um, take advantage of it. Um, and I mentioned the different cultural arts we have built into our academic offerings earlier. So if, if I can see, <laughs> let's go over uh, the calendar for August. Let's see, so Monday the 29th, that's our first day of classes. Get ready, y'all. Um, we're gonna have smudge and pancakes on Mondays. And like I said, Monday is our in-person uh, student talking circle. And then on Tuesdays, we have the running and walking club. So, um, and then on the 31st of August, that's a Wednesday, we have our first student senate meeting. You wanna talk about student senate? Well, later on when I get to my section. All righty. Um, and Wednesdays is our virtual student talking circle. That's at 3 p.m. And we're going to have fry bread and soup on Wednesdays. So if you're around, you know, come through. Darcy's fry bread is legendary. And in the month of September, um, Labor Day is the 5th. Uh, we're closed that day. So you get a, a nice three-day weekend. Um, there are some different presentations uh, that you're going to be able to access uh, via our TRIO department. Um, on Tuesday, September 6th, there's a time management presentation. Let's see, anything that stands out. Career coaching presentation, Tuesday. The 13th. Maybe I'll chime in right here, too. Yeah. Um, and maybe I will briefly talk about Student Senate. Um, so Student Senate is a student organization. It's like the lead dog student organization um all other student organizations um they'll be either um officially chartered or they'll just be like unchartered okay so student senate has a the way it's structured they have their own bylaws and constitution but they have a, a president they have some other officers like a vice president a treasurer a secretary and they're supposed to be up to, I believe, 12 uh, reps, uh, but there is an election process. And so on uh, the September calendar that I, I did email out to all students through Regroup, but it's also on our Facebook page, uh, but there'll be physical copies over at the Oracle Vision building as well. But on there, I believe it's every Wednesday at noon, we're going to have a virtual, uh, it's basically a Zoom meeting uh, to kind of get us started. The my goal is to keep that student organization um, the most active because it's a very powerful student organization in the sense that the president who's elected is a voting member on the Fort Peck Community College Board of Directors. So like every month I have to go to a special board meetings and I give updates and reports to basically uh, some of my bosses there, including President Gourneau, but the board of directors, uh, makes very important decisions, they approve our budgets. And so this student, who's the president of the student senate, um, represents the voice of the student. And so they're very, uh, I guess, influential in uh, having a voice and making sure that all your concerns, issues, that they're being heard and addressed. And so they can vote on any of those issues, whatever comes up at the, the college board of directors. And so not many colleges have that. Um, for students and so I would highly recommend that students participate so I'm always looking for uh, students that are interested in professional development or a leadership opportunity here's your opportunity uh way back in the day I'm getting old now but like back when I was a student here at Fort Peck Community College I participated in student senate some other student organizations and it's really kind of weird how things work the more you participate the more doors open because there's your academic experience, which is why you guys are all here. You guys want a degree, right? Because you want to get a good job and you want to go 
and social mobility, all that stuff. You want a, a better way for your family and all that type of good stuff. But part of that experience at the college is half of that is non-academic. It's non the non-cognitive. It's all the other things that are going to make your experience awesome. Okay. Because we want you guys all to be successful. Right. And so with student Senate, you're going to have an opportunity to vote. I think we might've talked about a slide or two before, uh, earlier uh, at the annual AHEC student conference. Okay. When COVID came, it kind of like messed everything up. Right. But one of the really cool things that uh, all tribal colleges did was they had an annual AHEC student conference. And AHEC, you hear all these terms, you're like, uh, AHEC, um, what the heck does that mean? American Indian Higher Education Consortium. Okay, so there's about 37 of us tribal colleges throughout the country, right? And every tribal college, uh, for the most part, is, is uniquely positioned in a tribal community, just like Fort Peck. We're all pretty rural for the most part. And so they'll, in different, um, up until COVID hit, they would do a rotating schedule of hosting it in different regions in the country. Okay. And so right when COVID hit, it was supposed to be down in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And what we try and do is we take anywhere from 30, 30 ish students, um, all go. And then a handful of employees from the college will go down and represent Fort Peck community college in academic competitions. Whether it's, if you're say you're, you're a business student, there's a business bowl is what they call it. It's kind of like Jeopardy. You know, they have a judge, they have a, like a moderator. You have Fort Peck Community Colleges in a table over here. You got, uh, I don't know, Ogallala Lakota College or Turtle Mountain College over here. And then you have the judges, a scoreboard. And then they ask these like trivia questions about business. And then you have your little stoppers over there. And then the first one to hit it and answer correctly, point. Okay. And so they have these competitions that are usually based in um in a team type format but there's also individual competitions okay um they have like uh, social things like powwows they'll have a huge vendor booth full of during the whole conference full of vendors that are either um work for uh the, the government may it might be uh branches of the military they might have uh, scholarship organizations like the American College Fund. They might have um, other four-year institutions, whether they might be tribal colleges, but they might be like Harvard. They might send Stanford. They might send the University of Montana. All these different reps will have booths when you go there. And so when students participate in these things, you have this opportunity to go there and make connections, increase your network. And who knows, I mean, what type of opportunities are there? So many, many opportunities, but the only way that you'll know about it is if you participate and you go, okay? And so with the, these AHEC student um, conferences, starting now, for me, and when I, I visit with staff, we look at all you students. We look at all you and we, we, we make these presentations like we are today and we kind of explain what it is so you're aware and then we try to recruit you, okay? And then when we recruit you, um, basically we're looking at eligibility, okay? Kind of like for that financial aid in order to receive all that Mazaska to live that good life, right? We want, in order for you to go to these um, conferences to travel with us, we kind of got to vet you a little bit. We can't be taking somebody that's going to be wiling out when they go down to the hotel and who knows what they do, right? We want to make sure that they're responsible and that they're... Um, going to represent Fort Peck Community College and the tribe here in a good way. And so we we pay for hotels, we pay for all the lodging. It's up to me to figure out how to get everybody over there. Sometimes we've had to fly students out to different things. Uh, if it's like, say, in Billings, uh, then we'll just drive, right? But this year, it happens to be in Phoenix, Arizona. And so if you want to be part of something like that, stop over uh, student services. There's going to be some sign-up sheets starting this semester. Usually, um, the conference is in mid-March, okay, mid-March. That's the main one, okay? But during this conference, they have another student organization. It's called AHEC Student Congress. So we have Student Senate. There's AHEC Student Congress. And so back in the day, um, I participated in that as well. And so I got to meet other students from completely different areas of the country, different tribes, 
lifelong friendships were made. And because of that, um, through these opportunities, I was able to travel all over. The, I went to Hawaii. I was in Maui. I got to hang out over there and do some paddle boarding. Oh, so cool. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was really chill, man. And then I went over to Washington, D.C. a couple different times. So that was the first time I had to like get on like a suit. And it really felt kind of weird. But um, those are the type of opportunities that you really probably wouldn't have, um, or at least not as easily uh, but through the college. But we're going to connect students with mentors throughout this whole process. And um, and I'll, at that student congress um, meeting that they have during the AHEC student conference, students from here have an opportunity to um, take on an elected position at a national level. And so it's just, again, another opportunity. Um, we're always encouraging students to participate. So that's one of the things, like I said, there's a, a powwow, there's a vendor booth going on during the whole thing. One of the things that I take a lot of, um, I guess, pride in is placing. I like to represent the college in a good way. So at the end of this three, four day conference, there's a, uh, a banquet, a student awards banquet. And there'll be this huge auditorium area. There's like about a thousand people there. Um, a mixture of, of students and employees from different colleges. And they feed everybody. And then uh, what they'll do is they'll announce the winners, usually the top three placing teams or individual um, winners of different categories. But there's like 20, 30 different type of categories. If let's say you're into um, drama, if you want to do speech and drama, you can talk about whatever. So we'll help you with it here. We'll, we'll hook you up with uh, an instructor and you can learn how to uh do public speaking. There's, there's going to be like coaching before the coaching. Yeah. We're not just sending everybody out to the wolves, man. And we don't force anybody to do anything, but if you want to, and you're comfortable with it, great. You know, like one of our students, we really tried helping him out when he, he came through the doors uh, back in the day was like Donovan or Chamble because of his personality. He likes speaking in front of people. And he went down and um, I did like a comedy skit and that kind of helped launch him. Now he just tours around the country and he's, doing all kinds of cool things. Maybe he was hanging out with Tatanka Means the other day. I was like, what? Yeah, famous <laughs> guy, man. So like, there's really cool opportunities to participate, stuff like that. Um, I'm a coach for the, the archery team. So if you like to shoot archery, um, I'll be the coach for that. And I'll be looking for students to participate. So those are just one of the things you have to look forward to. But all that stuff happens by participating, uh, going to your classes, um, and remaining eligible. And usually, that being a full time student, like twelve credits, that's your like your your meal ticket for, like I said, financial aid, but to be eligible for these type of things. So, and I just want to add something in here. Um, what Elijah listed just now were a bunch of different opportunities to distinguish yourself from the competition, right? This is basically a launchpad AHEC, being able to network, um, being part of the student senate. Those are things that can go on your resume for life. Those are accomplishments that will give you an edge when you're applying for a job, when you're looking for different opportunities as you go through life. And, um, you know, being on the board of directors for a college is kind of a big deal. Um, that's something that if you are lucky enough to get elected, you know, you, you have to have at least probably like 30, if not 40 years of like work experience to be on the board. So for like a college student to be able to say that uh, when I was in college, I was a member of the board, that's actually like huge. You know, the person looking at resume is going to be very impressed by that. Um, you know, these different opportunities we offer are a great way to not just take steps forward, but to leap forward in the direction that you want to go in. So like, uh, you know, thank you, Elijah, for just doing everything that you do to make these opportunities available for us. Really nice. Yeah. So the, it's the college we're trying to, the way we map things is through student organization, campus involvement. That's how you're going to um, basically seek the, um, the transformation that you're, you're here for. And we're, we're assuming that because you're here, um, those are the types of things that you want to participate in, um, just getting the degree, um, getting that experience, and then uh, developing these um, characteristics that will make you employable and a, 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 a member of our community that's going to make it a better place. So 
with that. Um, some other things on the, the calendar, I believe. Yeah, so on the 16th of September, I just wrote petitions due on that. So I'm going to be sending out some emails. Uh, there's an actual petition form that you'll need to fill out if you're interested for any one of those positions. That's the date that I needed either email to me or a physical copy over at the War Eagle Vision building. And then uh, you'll notice on the 14th, any students that have already declared um, that they're going to petition for a particular position, usually we have several people that want to be the president, vice president, and then a few of the other positions. During that student assembly on the 14th, right in this auditorium, the same format, we'll do another um, uh, like a Zoom webinar, Zoom meeting type thing. It'll be a hybrid thing where we'll have chairs out, allow people to join us via, not on Facebook, but through Zoom. Um, we're going to have the student assembly and we're going to do what you call a candidates forum, just kind of like for tribal elections, we'll do a candidates forum for student senate. and Usually what we'll do is we'll give, you know, Billy Bob in the back, if he wants to give his campaign speech, he can you know, lay it on out for everybody to figure out why they want to vote for you. And we'll give everybody like two to five minutes to give us their, um, explain their platform. And then you'll have an idea of who's who. And then on the. I'll make an announcement. I don't see it on the calendar right now, but towards the end of that month will be actual election day. We'll have an election. It'll be a digital ballot. So we'll announce the winner shortly. And then at that point, those officers will take um, effect immediately. But there are um, also several other student organizations that I think are important that you're aware of that are separate from Student Senate. One is what you call ABLE, and that stands for American Indian Business Leaders. Okay, so American Invisible, they'll have their own advisor, which I believe is Jarrett Medicine Elk. Jarrett Medicine Elk is uh, super helpful. He's, he's full of good energy and he likes, uh, he really um, is, goes out of his way to, to help students um, be and involved in that program. As well. Yeah, That's and really I, cool. I don't like bragging him up too much because I could go on and on with his <laughs> resume, but like he's involved in many different things uh, in addition to being a faculty member here. So he, he'll share some things with you about that. And like ABLE, they have their, we're one uh, chapter in a, a national organization. So we're, there's an opportunity for uh, business students to participate that and travel to like national conferences. You can escape Montana winter for a while. Yeah, you could be a sunbird, go down to Arizona or something. But so there's that. There's another student organization called um, ACES that stands for American Indian Science and Engineering Society. Um, so if you're a, a science major, um, I would highly encourage you to seek that position or that organization out again, they'll have a coach or an advisor. Um, another one is Bluestone Indian club. So if you are interested in, uh, increasing your cultural literacy and responsiveness with the uh, Cinnaboyan Sioux culture, there will be an advisor for that. There's a Dakota language club as well. And there's another club that's probably one of the most um, sought out and active clubs since it's uh, been officially uh, sanctioned uh, several years ago is Video Game Club. And so we had an employee, still an employee, his name's uh, Marty Reem. He's a, a prolific gamer. Um, he always has what you call a gamer thumb because he plays so much all night. <laughs> but he's he's a fun guy. We'll, we'll come in a room like this and we'll this big projector screen and we'll have like gaming tournaments throughout the year. And so if you're interested in something like that, you can bring your friends, family to participate. So a lot, a lot, in addition to some of the more serious things, we try to have fun. Too, oh yeah. You know? um, that's pretty much my whole deal for now on that. Let's see. What's next? Oh, that's me. So I just want to give you guys an overview of the student success seminar. It's a two credit class that I teach on Fridays. So I, I always got to plug this. There's so many reasons to go to school. Um, but I really want to show you guys in a visual way that it really does pay to stay in school. So um, 
this is a chart that is summarizing some data from the U.S. Department of Labor. I didn't make these numbers up, uh, if you're wondering. Um, so in 2019, now, you don't have to be good at math to see that the, high, the higher your degree is on the scale, the more advanced your degree is, the more money you're going to be able to bring in as income. Um, so, for example, we see that people who have a high school diploma or less, or maybe some college but no degree, you're going to be bringing about 600 to maybe 800 uh, per week. Whereas if you get an associate's, if you go up the chain, get a bachelor's, I encourage everybody to get a bachelor's or a master's if that's something that you know they want to do. Oh, okay. So actually what we're going to do is we are going to do a faculty meet and greet and I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt her presentation, but um, I wanted to, we got off on our agenda. We're a little bit behind and I, I didn't want to keep our faculty members that are um, wanting to do an introduction for students. I didn't want to keep them waiting. So what we'll do is we will introduce you to some of the faculty members that are on the call. So one second here. Okay, so faculty members that are on the, the Zoom webinar, I'm promoting you to panelist. And so you should be able to uh, introduce yourself. And if you could turn your camera on and maybe give a, an overview. Uh, right now, I'm just bear with me right now. I'm going individually um, and promoting them. So hold on one second. Okay, so I apologize for the lag there. Hopefully I was able to promote to panelists so everyone can see them on the webinar and on our live stream. Um, all of the faculty that were able to join us through Zoom webinar. Uh, and so what I'll do is I will introduce the ones that I can see on my screen anyway. And instructor Chris Versarge, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your, your last name, uh, correctly, but I believe uh, Chris is our faculty member for English uh, courses that we offer. Uh, are you able to hear me, Chris? And can you introduce yeah, yourself? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear okay. me? Yep, we can hear you good. Okay. Yeah, I'm. It actually the it's Ver Shaw, and uh, I teach English um, writing 101, 201, 095. I also teach the uh, introduction of public speaking as well as introduction to literature and um, American lit and let's see what else. Oh, creative writing class. And also offering uh, students an opportunity. We're starting up what's called a 
Intertribal Writers online magazine. And uh, so we're looking for submissions and creative writing, uh, poetry, fiction, one act dramas, uh, also uh, essay writing. So if you're interested in any of that, um, we'd be very interested in working with you and seeing your submissions. And I think we would like the first deadline for the first one to be uh, Halloween, October 31st. And then it will come out in November. All so right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, and then also the next faculty member I see is Mr. Jarrett Medicine Elk. Hi, can you hear me okay, Elijah? Yeah, I can hear you okay. All right, excellent. My name is Jarrett Medicine Elk. I am one of the business instructors here, and I also teach the art classes. So I'll be teaching drawing this semester, then painting in the uh in the spring um i was a well i am a former student so i did participate in the student senate as well as the AHEC student congress and i'd be happy to uh, help out with the business bowl for AHEC. Uh, and as uh, elijah and nora mentioned i am i'm also an entrepreneur so if you have a business idea i can show you how to get it worked out how to get it launched and should you be looking for investors i can explain to you or give you an idea what investors are looking for I am at the Dumont building in Will Point. My extension is 6382. So anytime you want to visit about anything, I'd be happy to talk with you. All right. Thank you, Jared. Um, uh, Miss Lois Sprague, uh, I want to introduce you as one of our, also our faculty senate uh, chair, I believe, but awesome instructor. If you could introduce yourself, please. All right. Good morning, everyone. I'm Lois Sprague. Uh, I am the chair for the social work program, the addiction studies program, and the psychology program. Um, I also have a graduate of the two plus two social work program who's going to be teaching the intro class this year, and another graduate of the two plus two program who has now been hired as the liaison with the University of Montana. So she will be available to help any students who have questions about that program, need help applying, um, and kind of how that process works. So I also am in the Dumont building here in Wolf Point. Um, I will be teaching online, but I will also have a couple days each week in Wolf Point and Poplar will, where I will have live in-person classes as well. So if you have any questions, let me know. All right, thank you, Loy. Uh, another one of our instructors is Miss Marge Abbott. Uh, can you hear me, Marge? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Uh, yep. Okay, uh, I'm Margaret Abbott. Uh, I te also teach English uh, writing and public speaking. Uh, my office is in Poplar in the ROS building, a little small building between the Science Lab and War Eagle Vision. Um, I teach uh, composition uh, 101, 201, uh, uh, speech, public speaking, and um, uh, basic expository writing. And I also have a yoga class. Uh, yoga is this, this year being held in the new wellness center. And I, I have not been over to look at the facility yet, but uh, sometimes when you have a tough schedule and family problems, it helps to relieve a little stress. And also you will get your health requirement credits if you sign up for yoga. So think about that. Um, I have uh, uh, encouraged people to, uh, if you are an avid writer, person who wants to get your writing out there to participate in the online um, the online magazine. Also, as you were talking about AHEC, they also have a writing contest that I encourage students to submit to. It's, um, it's due, I believe, basically they announce the winners at AHEC. So the, um, the, the word usually comes out at the beginning of the year, January, and the deadline is usually sometimes in February. Uh, they have uh, fiction and nonfiction essay categories as well as poetry. And I'm generally the clearinghouse person for that. Also, they also have uh, competitions for uh, uh, plays. So um, if, you're, if you are a, a, a play writer, uh, an actor, uh, 
you know, put something together that you can use as competition at AHEC for that as well. And I can, I can advise you and, and, and coach you. I'm sure Chris also is a, a, a coach for any writing that you may want to do for the, uh, the uh, AHEC writing contest as well. Um, come by and see me. Uh, I, uh, I, um, I advise general studies. So if you're not quite sure what direction you wanna you wanna follow, come and see me and we can get you set up starting on that particular major. Thank you. All right, thank okay. you, Marge. Uh, and then I'd like to introduce uh, Joanne Stewart Cloaker, if you can hear me, Joanne. Yep, I can hear you. Um, uh, my name is Joanne Stewart Cloaker. Uh, last year was my first year here, so this will be my second year. I teach uh, the environmental science program that includes environmental science class and principles of biological diversity. I also teach um, the nutrition class for our science majors and health and wellness, which is a general requirement for most um, degree seeking students. So most of you will see me at some point in that class, if not in one of the science classes. We are currently making lots of changes in the science building. We're adding a lot of things to the environmental science program, um, everything from reorganizing the building and, and painting to um, uh, starting new field trips this year. We're hoping to get our students out in the field. We're, we're purchasing some boats to get students um, in environmental science out on the river. We're planning field trips to take students up to the Buffalo Ranch. And we're now getting camera traps to get students out doing wildlife surveys this fall as well. That will be happening in the next couple of months. So students will have a lot more opportunities to do some hands-on work with environmental science. So if you know anybody who's interested in that, we're, um, we are ready and uh, for new students to come into the program. So if um, this program is really beneficial for anybody who's interested not just in an environmental science degree, but who might want to move on later on to a wildlife biology degree, conservation science, um, uh, park, park ranger, park management, uh, range management, any of those could benefit from getting an associate in environmental science first and then move on later for a bachelor's degree. So if any of those are of interest to you or you know anybody interested in those fields, please send them my way and we can get them started. So we're looking forward to getting lots, new, lots of new students in this program in the next couple of years. So welcome back students, um, to those returning and welcome to all the new students this year. So thanks and I hope to see some of you soon. Okay, great. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, the next instructor I'd like to introduce is Miss Billy Norgard. Can you hear me, Billy? Yes. I was hoping you're going to pass me by. Anyway, my name is Billy uh, Norgard, and I teach business classes. And my office is located here in Poplar. It's in Old Main, which is the building just west of Greet the Dawn. And some of the classes that I teach, some of the business classes I teach uh, for fall semester is office success strategies, which helps uh, the student get skills that they would uh, need in order to work in an office setting. Also business writing and accounting. You have to have accounting 201 in order to take the other accounting classes that are offered in the spring. And I only offer accounting 201 in the fall. So if you're interested um, in any of these classes, uh, you can contact me either in person or you can email me at bnorgard at fpcc.edu. What else? I, I think that's, oh, I'm teaching my classes online and also in person, which is 70, it's a 70 class, which is polysynchronous. Am I right, you guys, I think? And uh, so if you prefer not to take my classes online, you can come into my classroom, which is located in Old Main. And welcome students and have a wonderful um, fall semester and academic year. Okay, great, thank you, Billy. Yep. Uh, the next instructor I'd like to introduce is uh, Mr. William Norgard. Can you hear me, William? Hey, can you hear me? Uh, yes, sir. All right. 
Hello, welcome everybody. Um, I'm the welding instructor here at Fort Peck Community College. Uh, we're located in the Vocational Education Building. It's about a block south of the boulevard. When Steve speaks, he might know our actual address, but we're pretty easy to find. It's a big building. Um, any questions, stop in and visit me. I believe that's about our um, my email, wnorgard at fpcc.edu, or stop in and see me, either or. All right, thank you, William. Yep. Uh, the next instructor I'd like to introduce is Miss uh, Sasha Brownlee. Can you hear me, Sasha? Yeah, it appears you must be muted. Uh, that's okay. I'll let her work on her uh, microphone issue, and then maybe we'll just circle back if she's able to do that later. So maybe I'll right for now. I'll just move on to the next instructor, uh, Mr. Garrett Bigleggins. Can you hear me, Garrett? Can you hear me? Uh, yep, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Garrett Bigleggins and I teach um, Native American studies courses, a variety of courses, uh, including uh, intro to Native American studies, which is required for all students and is offered every semester. My office is over at the RLS building. I kind of sit uh, next to Mar um, Margaret Abbott and Chris. We're all in this building by ourselves. And uh, my classrooms are in RLS two. So, uh, we're in the same building uh, for all my classes. And uh, just wanna welcome all the students. This semester, I'm looking forward to uh, meeting everybody in class. I teach in-person classes. And uh, so uh, I want everybody to have a successful uh, semester and anything that I can do to help, let me know. My office is also over there too. So thank you. All right, thank you, Garrett. Uh, the next instructor I'd like to introduce is uh, Andy Archdale. Can you hear me, Andy? Yes, I can. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Uh, yep, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, so welcome, everybody, to FPCC. And my name is Andy Archdale. Uh, my office is here in Wolf Point in the Dumont Building. And I am teaching our history classes, American History, Montana History, Western Civ. Uh, as well as our some education classes and some early childhood education classes. So if you are interested in elementary education or early childhood education, uh, I would be the one that you would want to speak to. Um, but I just wanted to welcome everybody. Um, FPCC, I think you'll find that we all try to be as helpful as possible. So I hope that you take advantage of that and ask us any questions you may have. And I hope you have a good semester. Okay, great. Thank you, Andy. Uh, the next instructor I'd like to introduce is Mr. Uh, Anthony Shields. Uh, can you hear me, Tony? Yeah, yeah. can you hear me now? Yep, yep. Hello, everybody. Anthony Shields here. Um, my, my office is located also in the same building as uh, the library. Um, I'm in, mostly going to be in the um, and registering students next couple of days here. In the, lab, in the computer uh, lab nine, this is JS9 outside on the sign. Um, it's kind of crazy right now. We got uh, computers getting set up and whatnot. That's what I'll be doing the next, you know, off, off time here if I'm not enrolling somebody. But we got a large turnout of enrollment right now. Um, all my courses this semester and probably going forward are going to be all dash 70 or polysynchronous, meaning uh, kind of a blended course where you'll be able to um, take my courses, you know, via um, Zoom meeting and also at the same time in the in the lab. Um, if you don't understand what all those uh, those different um, types of instruction, you know, is asynchronous, polysynchronous. Uh, it is explained um, on my uh, classes, on my own um, Canvas courses, right on the homepage. 
but you can also under if you don't understand those there's a on part of the um uh, course schedule i think it's about the third second page down there's a kind of explains to you what those um you know if we're a dash 10 we're in the classroom or if we're a dash 70 we're kind of blended and then 90 is uh, online only um got a lot of people enrolled in a lot of the courses so far um it's gonna be a busy semester if you want to talk it and you or uh, if you have to take a general one of the general uh, study courses like um intro to computers uh office microsoft basic office or those types of courses like cap courses you can contact me um my phone number is uh in the office is uh, 768-6319. If you call that, I do have that forwarding to my cell number, so I won't miss it. And if you do, if it if you do leave a voicemail, it will I will I will get it. It'll be recorded and go right to my inbox, so I'll be able to hear it there as well, my email. Um, but I'll be here. I'm not going anywhere. I'll be here in the lab signing everybody up. I'm going to be busy tomorrow. I, I know I already, I already made a lot of appointments for this afternoon and. Tomorrow is going to be a busy day because that's when everybody wants to come in. Um, if you have any questions, just pop in and uh, see me. I'll be here the rest of the week. I hope your semester goes well. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Anthony. Um, I believe that's all of the faculty members that have joined the call with the exception of Sasha. Did we get our mic issue figured out, Sasha? Or I don't think she has got her mic issue figured out. Um, okay. I guess I'll chime in for a few. I know that um, Sasha's mic doesn't work and I know Judy is registering students and I know truck driving is um, actually driving with two students that drove this summer that test this week. So um, Sasha Brownlee is our criminal justice and paralegal instructor. Um, she's on the call, but can't join us without a microphone. Her office is located in Old Main. Um, our paralegal and criminal justice programs have been a phenomenal addition to the college. Um, we've seen we've seen quite a few students come through and actually the, this morning uh, just received an email from a student that tri passed her tribal bar exam. So lots of great things coming out of that program. Um, Judy Ogle teaches our information, our digital technology and GIS. Um, she has some actually was able to purchase some new mic or video cameras um, and she's also works with our student campus newsletter getting footage for that um, truck driving um, jerry archdale and jeremy redstone the truck driving instructors our truck driving um, building is down located next to the votech building um, we are registered with the oh judy's on the webinar but says she can't do anything elijah um, I added her as a, she has to accept the panelist invite. Okay. Um, I tried promoting her. She raised her hand. Um, Steve Kuhn and Steve Harada just accepted yeah. it. So they're both on now. So. Okay. Um, truck driving. We are registered with the federal registry that we have to, that's required by the state of Montana. So anybody who wants their CDL, um, we are part of that registry and, and have a, have had a good student count moving forward with that. Having said that, I'll turn it over to the last two that have just been able to, to join us. Okay, great. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Steve Kuhn. Can you can you hear us, Steve? Yeah, I can hear you. Can Can you guys hear me over there? Yep. Yep. We can um, yes, hear you good. I am. Uh, my name is Steve Kuhn. I am the uh, pre health pre nursing instructor here. I teach most of the uh, science classes, including all the those involved in nursing. Um, and I have a couple of research grants too that I get the students involved with. Um, so if you're interested in any of those things, um, my office is at the science building, of course. And you can always come over anytime you want uh, to talk to me if you if you need to. Um, I don't think there's anything else I need to say. Um, so uh, welcome, students, and. Um, yeah, you know, just come by and uh, or email me if you need anything. Um, I have also changed 
some of the classes to online for some of the students who um, are you know, an exception who can't actually attend. So if, if you do have a, a question about that, you can also come and see me. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Kuhn. Um, uh, Steve, I'd like to introduce Steve Harada, if you're able to, to hear me, Steve. Yeah, I can hear you, Elijah. Uh, can you hear me? Yep, yep, we can hear you good. Okay. Yeah, I was on, but I was on via Facebook, and I wasn't, uh, didn't see the register as a panelist. But anyway, uh, good morning, everybody. I'm Steve Harada, teach automotive technology. We have a one-year and a two-year program. Uh, there's a huge need for automotive technicians everywhere. Lots of jobs available locally, as well as probably in every community uh, in the country, but uh, definitely a shortage for auto techs. Our office, uh, I, I looked up the address. I heard Will say that Steve would likely know the address. Well, it's 111 West First Avenue. So we're, we're right down from the post office, uh, down from Tandy's Grocery, T-Bird Body Shop, the largest building in downtown, beautiful downtown Poplar, uh, kind of kitty corner from the Legion Club to the south of us. But uh, doors are always open, welcome to come down and visit. Uh, we, we want everyone to be successful in their in their academic endeavors at Fort Peck. And uh, yeah, it's, a, it's exciting new semester. So good luck and thanks everybody. All right, thank you, Steve. There's a few other faculty that joined the call. Uh, I believe Miss Roxanne Smith teaches some adjunct courses. Do you have anything you wanna share, Roxanne? Good morning, everybody. I am also a product of FPCC. I graduated in 1985, woohoo, class of 85, <laughs> Buffalo Chasers. Um, I am adjunct faculty at FPCC. I'm gonna be teaching two classes in the Native American studies area. One is um, oral and written traditions of American Indians, and it's a polysynchronous class. So it's a 70 class. And I'm also doing American Indian education, which is also a polysynchronous class. Um, and I'm looking forward to teaching. I haven't taught on this platform before, so it's going to be a fun challenge to do. Also, I'm doing a um, basic computer usage class, and that meets on Wednesday nights for anybody who is really a novice using computers. So um, my office is on the boulevard in the, in the um, oh, what is our building called? Uh, I can't remember what my building's called. Institutional research. I had to think about it just for a second. I got those golden age things happening in my brain. I have to think a little bit before I speak. Anyway, I'm welcome students. I'm looking forward to meeting you all. Have a good day. All right. Thank you, Roxanne. And then uh, the last instructor that I see on the, the call that joined us is uh, Miss Judy Ogle. Are you able to um, hear me, Judy? I can hear you. I just can't see you. I mean, I could see you on that. Well, okay, now I could see myself. I had to log in and out multiple times, so. I had two screens open at once. So can you hear me? Oh, yeah, we can hear you. We can't see you, but we can hear you. I guess that'll okay. work. It's asking me to um, do a number or something but as long as you can hear me um i teach computer application courses um with the office course it's an online course this semester and also the access class um i teach an online computer science course i also um i teach the uh GIS courses, uh, introduction to GIS, um, the principles of GIS class, that's geographic information systems. I have some um, media art classes where my intro to video, uh, Photoshop and web design. 
So those are all the classes I teach a semester. My office, oh, I have computer fluency. That's also an online course. Uh, my office is located in the library in the IT hallway. And the lab is located in the library also. If you're in, in my classes are all 70, so they're hybrid. So I have some in person. I have some that remote students. So they're both hybrid, um, but the lab is also in the library. And I think the well, welcome. And I think that's about it. Okay, thank you, uh, Judy. Yeah. Um, so th I want to thank all the, the faculty for taking time to join us today and, and introduce themselves. There are several other adjuncts, and I think maybe in a few other uh, full-time faculty that weren't able to join us today. Uh, but that's okay. We'll definitely have time to uh, meet them later on. And so what we're going to do right now is we're going to try to plow through the rest of our agenda real quick. And then we have one more drawing. And so... I know it's been a, a long morning here, so just kind of bear with us. I disabled. Okay. Then we will go share our screen right here. Okay, it lets you back in the driver's seat. Uh, surprise, by the way, I'm, I'm also adjunct faculty. I'm teaching two math classes, a student success class, and human relations. Oh, so I'm in the driver's seat because I talk fast. Let's get through this. <laughs> so uh, student success, like I said, it's a two-credit class that I teach on Fridays. It's from 10 a.m. to 11.50 a.m. Um, attending in person is uh, strongly recommended. Um, we created this course in collaboration with Jobs for Montana's graduates, um, also known as JMG. The intention of this course was to provide the academic, personal, and life management tools needed to function effectively and complete your degree. Um, our approach to success is holistic, meaning, you know, if you don't really feel good about yourself, if you don't feel good at home, if you're kind of struggling to have healthy relationships, then you're going to be struggling in your academics and just being successful in life. Um, and so the objectives of this course is to help you navigate the system, uh, how to achieve as a student. Uh, we focus on some career development and exploring options after FPCC. So here are some of the topics that we cover. Um, we, on the first class, we're gonna cover financial aid and applying for scholarships. Um, we teach you how to use Canvas, Cengage, Zoom, and more. Um, so if these are things you, you know, want to like really brush up on, um, it's just nice to be able to come to class and get credit for learning how to, you know, use these tools. They're going to help you in all your other classes. Uh, personal and academic organization skills, time management, uh, trio and campus resources, advising, mental health, addiction, communication skills, career exploration. Um, how to use LinkedIn to find and apply for jobs, including, you know, uh, work from home jobs that pay pretty nicely. Uh, beyond FPCC, you know, highways, pathways to higher education. And uh, Wolf Point Job Service comes in and does professional development workshops as well. <clears throat> um, classes located in the computer lab in Poplar in the tribal library. Um, you can join in live via Zoom, but being there in person is strong, strongly recommended so that you can get more hands-on help. Uh, there's no textbook. You're going to get your course material in class and have time to complete the assignments in class. Um, attendance and participation, that counts for about 75% of your final grade, and then assignments count for 25%. So really, if you're there every class, you're going to pass the class. The important thing is that you're there and ready to learn. Financial aid, let's see. Let's see, so spring 2022, we do help students apply for FAFSA and other scholarships. Um, we have a financial assistance application for COVID uh, payments, uh, monthly stipends. Uh, make sure you do that application. Also, if you're a new high school graduate, we do offer scholarships. Um, 
Let's see. So I want to talk about something that's going to be important in being able to receive a monthly stipend. You have to be in good academic standing. Now, I don't believe that we're confirming the payment amounts per month at this time, um, but it sounds like they're going to be, you know, helpful. Um, so in order to even get the stipend, you need to make sure you're attending all your classes, whether it's online or in person. If you can't make it to a class, email your instructor beforehand and let them know. Um, it's just a professional and polite thing to do and it lets the instructor know you care about the class. Um, make sure that you complete all your assignments on time um, and get you know good grades in your classes. You wanna get at least C's, you wanna at least pass your classes. Um, you need a minimum of a 2.0 GPA, uh, which is a grade point average. Um, that's the same standard for receiving financial aid like Pell. Yeah, okay. Let's do that. Yeah. Um, Lynette, uh, can you, um, do you have anything that you want to share briefly about financial aid? So we just kind of briefly covered financial aid, but, um, I wanted to give our, our director of uh, student financial aid an opportunity to share if there's any uh, key highlights. There's always certain deadlines. That's one thing that you guys got to be aware of is like Pell has deadlines when we distribute certain things. And she has um, some helpful information I think you need to be aware of. So, Okay, I'm just going to cover some stuff really quick. I know you guys had a long morning, so... Um, some key information that you guys need to know if you haven't seen me about um, your financial aid, your um, FAFSA, it's free application for federal student aid. And it's also known as the Pell Grant, it's the same thing. So if we're talking about Pell Grant, we're talking about the FAFSA. Um, you can go to studentaid.gov and do the application. If you're, um, it'll ask you a series of questions. And if you're um, under 24, not married, don't have any children, you're going to fall into your parents. And you're using 2020 income. They're always two years behind. Okay, so this year, when you fill it out, you're going to use your 2020 income. Um, as these guys stated, they help you guys fill those out. If you need help, you could come over there across the street and they'll walk you through it. The American Indian College Fund is another funding source that we have. Almost everybody that fills out that application will get some sort of money. We try to um, give everybody something. The minimum we can pay is 750. So if $750 sounds good to you, do the app. I would suggest doing the application. Again, come across the street if you need help, we'll help you. There's the, also the COVID application. That's going to help you pay your books, tuition, and fees. And it also gives you a monthly stipend. Um, they took it off the website for the summer because we weren't using it. They are now in the process of getting that back on. So it should be, um, for people that are doing online, should be ac easy access. If you're here in person, you could get an application across the street, get it filled out. It takes you maybe five minutes to get it filled out and turned in. So that's how we're going to pay you. So the first monthly payment comes out and you're standing there and you don't know, know why you didn't get one. It's probably because you didn't fill out the application. Gianforte, um, it's for automotive technology, diesel technology, information network technology, truck driving, welding technology. If you are taking those courses, that's another funding source for you. Okay. September 15th is the deadline for that. That goes straight to the state. The state will send me a list. I give them the information that I have, and then they'll send me a finalized list of who they selected to give them. It's $1,000 a semester. So if $1,000 sounds good to you and you're in one of those programs, those are um, uh, mostly certificate programs. So um, those are the programs eligible. If you're um, a tribal member of any tribe, uh, more than likely your tribe will have a higher ed. I don't know if you guys ever heard of higher ed from your tribe, but um, even if you're not from Fort Peck, um, most tribes have a higher ed program. Um, 
if you miss the deadlines for this fall, there's um, more than likely a spring application that you might be able to still make. Sometimes um, the deadlines are in October. So check, check with your tribe. Um, you can, um, ABT is for adult vocational training and higher ed is for higher education. So it's either a VOTEC vocational or you're gonna do like psychology, education, American Indian Studies, those ones are higher ed. So there is a, for Fort Peck, there is two different applications. So you can uh, determine which um, program that you're in and um, fill out the correct one. It's on the Fort Peck Tribes website. Uh, some of the things that Elijah has on my list is uh, need to be a minimum of a 2.0. 2.0 is a C average for FAFSA, okay? You have to be um, at least a minimum of 2.0. FAFSA is kind of a crazy thing. People think that they get FAFSA forever. We've had in the past, they've had professional students that have went to school for 10 years and never did anything but go to school and collect money. So they had to put some rules in place. One of them is 150% um, rule. At a two-year institution, so your time clock is starting now. Okay, every class that you guys enrolled in or are going to enroll in is starting your clock. And every class that you enroll in is an attempted class, whether you complete it or don't. If you withdraw from it, it's going to count against your 90 credits. When you reach 90 credits, you are done at a two-year institution with federal aid. Okay, so when you hit 91 credits, you're no longer going to receive a Pell Grant. I still have students coming into my office saying, um, can I get the Pell Grant? And I'm like, oh, well, you got 102 credits. You're not eligible anymore. What? So I try to get that out there. So if you're attempting classes, um, complete them so that you can get your degree done in time. and You're not running out of time because when you go to a four-year institution, the role is going to still be the same. It's just going to be bigger numbers. You're going to need 120 credits to complete and they're going to give you an additional 60. So at 180 credits, you're going to be done with the bachelor's, whether you have the bachelor's or not. So keeping that. Um, and then they also have what they call lifetime eligibility used and you get 12, 12 semesters or six years of Pell Grant. So there's kind of two, two rules to financial aid. One of them is going to affect you quicker than the other. And then um, again, with the um, COVID payments that we give out every month, we will be checking with Nora. They'll be checking grades or um, attendance. And so if we got people telling us that you guys aren't in attendance, then you guys will be cut off with the payments. And so every month they check, check to make sure who's going to class and who's not. And then people get cut off and then they're mad, but we can see and they can tell when the instructors um, do attendance and we can see who's not going and then they'll put that in there and then um, you won't be getting the monthly stipend. So make sure you guys are in stay in attendance with your instructors, stay in good standing. Um, we have an emergency aid. Also, it will be online. Um, it's different than the COVID money. So, um, it's um, some funding that we get from, it's also, it's also a federal um, program and you have to be uh, 2.0 to receive that funding. So we check the GPA, we check your status, and then um, we have a committee of about five of us and we'll each take a look at your application. You'll have to submit um, your uh, estimate. So say that you need a tire and um, we'll, uh, You'll, you'll bring the estimate and we'll, you'll download it into that, that application. And then when we get in there, we'll take a look at everything. And then um, if you need a $300 tire or whatever, then we'll write, say it's from Pro Tire, we'll write the check to Pro Tire, we'll deliver the check to Pro Tire, and then you'll go back over to Pro Tire and get your tire fixed. So that one also is um, GPA based. Uh, let me see if I'm missing anything. Um, if you're living within um, 
if you're living farther than 13 miles from the school and you're actually having to go into an in-person class, we have gas vouchers. They're located across the street and um, you could pick them up once a week. We usually like to do them on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesdays because it, um, most times we don't have classes on Friday and we don't like to give them out on Thursday because if you haven't used them for the whole week, we assume that you don't need them. So we don't usually do gas vouchers on Thursdays unless it's an extreme emergency. And um, it's, a, it's a busy job for um, Darcy to do. So we kind of cut it off on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So pick up gas vouchers on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So that um, you get your gas vouchers for the week. But those are for only in-person classes. Okay, if you're doing all online, you're not eligible. So that's a quick run over run. If um, my office again is across the street, um, I'm, my email is online. So if um, you out of towners need to email me, email me your questions. It's a lot easier for me to go in and check my emails. than sometimes I'm up helping another student and can't answer my phone all the time. So emails are really quick to go back even if I don't get to you right away, I will before the end of the day or that night. Sometimes I answer emails from home um, and it's just quicker to do that than try to answer telephone calls all day long. Because we are, we do get busy across the street and we're always helping students. Even if I'm not doing financial aid, somebody might have a question on um, transcripts and, you know, I have to jump up and help the next student. So um, Right now is really a super busy time. So just be patient with us and we'll try to answer all your guys' questions and get you guys all that you need to do to get going for the, have a successful semester. So thank you. All right, thank you, Lynette. Uh, a few quick things, I'll go over real quick here. Um, they're having a event here at noon. So I wanna try and wrap it up here in just a couple minutes. Uh, so we're gonna, Kind of bypass the trio presentation uh but david james over at student services he'll definitely uh hook you up with the individual presentation later on uh or or his staff but under the recruitment and retention i do want to address this uh just very briefly um a lot of your attendance and participation um uh, we can uh basically measure uh, if you're even going to classes, if you're logging into Canvas, uh, turning in your assignments through the um, Canvas program itself. There's a attendance tracker on there, and that's how we can justify paying students uh, scholarships and different grants and whatnot. And so when you apply for the American College Fund, uh, Hell, all FASA, all this stuff, a lot of it's free money. We have so much money at the college for students and scholarships and grants that we usually can't even give it all away. But we have to have these, these um, thresholds for participation, not just your GPA, but you have to be actively going to your classes. So if you're not, we're gonna look at that through some uh, retention programs that we got, and then we'll make a determination based on the committee if uh, we're allowed to, you're allowed to get that money or not. Uh, and so the, there's a dropout detective program in Canvas and the attendance tracker. A couple other things that I, I want to talk to you too about is about the mental health. Uh, being a student, you have access to a, a free program called Talkspace. Talkspace is a professional grade uh, mental health service. It's completely anonymous. We pay thousands and thousands of dollars the past few years for this professional grade service. So if you or your family and employees, we can use it as well. You can log in and you can have individual sessions with trained licensed professionals to address anything, even if you're having a happy day. But if it, you're super stressed, whatever your issue is, concern that you have, you have someone to talk to 24-7, 365, as long as you have access to the internet. We have no idea who, who accesses or uses. It's true. Even though like, like maybe Nora's the administrator, she can like pay the bill. The only thing we can tell is if anybody's even using it all. We have no way they, they encrypt it. We have no way of knowing. So don't worry about uh, the, I guess the, if you're wondering if anybody will even know if you're using it or not, it's meant to be anonymous, but it's an awesome service. Please take advantage of it. You'll be seeing some emails on how to access it 
um, very shortly. So that that is a thing. Two other things that are super important. We talked earlier about the Buffalo Chasers podcast. We're going to be do that on Thursdays on that um, calendar of events. Um, it's going to be in a podcast webinar format, just like how we're doing this for those of you that are online. Uh, they talk about a lot of cultural things. Uh, the whole point of that is to increase students' cultural literacy and provide opportunities for students to engage and to, to listen to uh, elders like Mr. Tommy Christian and Mr. Earl Bullhead talk about things. Uh, that's your foot in the door uh, for those type of things. The other thing is the virtual and in-person um, student talking circles, Mondays and Wednesdays, led up by uh, Miss Nora. She'll be one of the staff there. I believe Mr. Tommy Christian will be there as well. But it's a, meant to be like a closed place for students to talk about whatever issues that you want to talk about. Uh, by far one of the more popular um, events that we have on campus. Um, other couple of things, um, by law, because we received Title IV funding, there's some Title IX regulations. I'm the Title IX uh, compliance officer for the college. Uh, we have to uh, inform students in the whole campus of any type of illegal or issues that happen on campus on our web page there is a place to report any issues that you have if you see a crime if whatever the issue is there's a digital way to send information to our security team and by august 1st i will be sending out a full report on all of the um, security equipment and different things related to security and technology and, and campus crime that happened over the past year. Um, there's just a lot of technology that we've integrated into the, the college. Um, but for now, I think I'm going to call that quits. I don't want to stand between these ladies and lunch, but I do want to ask Miss Yellowhammer if you could, we're going to do our last drawing and then we'll, we'll get out of here. And remember, we're drawing for a Cho Buffalo Chasers jacket embroidered. And would you do the honors, Nora? Of course, of course. Oh, gotta pick a good one. And the winner is. I, I don't have a name. Okay, but I have redraw a number. then. <clears throat> redraw. That means that this belongs to somebody who's here. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. I hope Where's you have your tickets, y'all. Okay. One, seven, five, two, six, four. One, seven, five, two, six, four. Are you in the house? If not, we have to redraw. Okay. If they don't. It, anybody win? Okay, we'll anybody? Redraw. All right. I'm going to redraw then. <laughs> well, you got to stick around. One seven five two four six. One seven five two four six. Okay, all okay, right. Okay, we got a winner. Great. <laughs> okay, you can redeem that prize, but give us your ticket. But you, we can redeem it over at Student Services. Okay, so I, I want to thank everybody for joining us today at noon, which is like right now, uh, we have free lunch over at the War Eagle Vision Building. If you want a free sack lunch, pick it up. You can eat it there or you can take it to go. But at one o'clock, we're gonna meet out on the, the Greet the Dawn lawn and do a campus tour. So anybody that wants to be participate in that, come check it out. All right, Dokusta, Petiwashte Yohapo. Uh,